Hello. Hello, Masha. Hello, Veronica. Can you hear me well? Hello. I see green, so it should be working. <laughs> don't see your reaction, so. Wow, Los Angeles, sun is shining here too. <laughs> oh, great, thank you, Sarah, for letting me know. <laughs> it works perfect, great. Hello, everyone. Brussels. Sun is shining, too. Wow. Finally. <laughs> oh, thank you, Laura. It's my wallpaper. Sometimes people ask me if I painted it, but no. <laughs> no, I cannot do that. Hello from Scotland. Hello. Italian living from Paris or living in Paris. Hola, Barcelona. <laughs> Great that you are here. Hello, Unur. <laughs> Good to have you. From Iceland, yes. <laughs> Hello, Canada, Vancouver. Oh, I, I lived close by in um, Kelowna when I was 17. Hello, Concha. Good to have you here. <laughs> Hello. All right, from Ireland all over the place so beautiful isn't it you know this moment in time from everywhere around the world that we come together all right so let's start today uh talking about the earth elemental energy uh from the chinese medicine so I've done already various webinars on uh, all the other elemental energies, and today Earth was the one. Even though this is not really the time of the year, according to Chinese medicine, where the Earth element is really noticeable, but that doesn't really matter, actually, because it actually brings me also into talking about more of noticing and recognizing Earth elemental energies, even though we're not in the specific season. Hi, Portugal, Ireland. So, um, because that is always what I notice that happens with students, that they say, oh, okay, so I should uh, stimulate my earth elemental energy only in the after summer, because the earth element is related to after summer period. Or, oh, is it connected to really earth? So, Actually, people uh, take it really detailed or really um, matter of fact, so to say. Like the the name implies like an element of earth. But um, the Chinese, they, they meant it more also as a function of understanding basically the energies in the universe that are at work. but And we are part of the universe. So also those energies can be recognized within. So what they um, tried to do was basically to make a model, and the five elemental energies are part of that, uh, to make it understandable or to recognize, for example, certain manifestations of certain energies that are working within us. And for most people in the West, the, the energy is something uh, that we cannot really phantom or cannot really get our heads around because we try to analyze it, we try to... Uh, understand it. 
So I'm trying to make a mix today of both of the things without taking the, the essence out of it, making it less energetic, so to say. So how you can go about these elemental energies, so not only earth, but all the elemental energies that are uh, mentioned in the Chinese medicine. So we have wood, we have water, we have fire, we have metal, and we have earth. So they see it as an interplay of a certain kind of feel that the energy has to it. So like now, we're in springtime. So this is starting to feel palpable in springtime, where the, the vegetation, as it were, is waiting to explode, waiting to come up. Here in the Netherlands, where I'm based, it not ha has not yet really started yet, but it's you feel it in the air. Today is the first really sunny day, and uh, yesterday as well, but it starts to come. We as human beings have also that feeling like mm, that something boils, that something wants to come up, kind of in the manifestation of, for example, inspiration, when you have an inspiration and then you want to go and do it. That is really what Earth, on the other hand, is a really centered energy. So going back to your center, being in connection with yourself, but also in the surroundings, it is after summer. This is when we um, get the the the, uh, the products of the seeds that we've been planting. Planting, so we can reap the, the uh, of the seeds that we have sown, literally. Yeah. So it has to do the earth elemental energy has to do also with nourishment, but not only actual eating, like that it is connected to digestion, but also energetically it has to do with digesting emotions or thoughts or situations that happen in life. So it is, that's something, first of all, before I go really deep into the earth elemental energy, but that's something that you really have to understand about Chinese medicine. It is not just a couple of things that you kind of can recognize, oh, the color belonging to the elemental energy earth is yellow. Oh, and it, it is about, um, uh, a muscle, myofascia, that it's strong, it's about nourishment. Uh, oh, when it's out of balance, the emotion is worry. But if it's in balance, it's connected to contentment. Okay, these are all, this is all true, but it's more this energetic feeling of like recognizing when you're out of balance or when you're in balance. And this is something really difficult for us in the Western world most of the time. So, what I would like you to do when I am, I have uh, talked about the elemental energy of earth, that you go about it in your day-to-day -day life and kind of see, even though it's not uh, after summer time, that you recognize certain elements within your character or in the way you're doing things, or maybe in your digestion or the state of mind, or maybe even in the surrounding, you know, that you're in, that you can recognize certain elemental earth qualities. So what does that mean? So first, I, I mentioned already a couple of things. Yeah. So earth element is about being centered, about nourishment, uh, about taking care of yourself. So if your earth elemental energy within yourself is in balance, you are equally giving attention, uh, love, care to other people, as well as to yourself. So most of the time, the earth element is also connected to like the feeling we have when we talk about mother earth or the earth or the mothery feeling of like wanting to take care, to embrace, to nurture, to feed, to hold, to um, really connect deeply. That is what the earth energy is about. So when that is inside of you in balance, then you have this balance between giving and receiving. But it's also about getting things done. It is a responsible feeling of um, being able to set a plan and to get it done, you know, to be able to finish things so that it is also connected to the worker, so to say. So whether or not you're a woman or whether or not you're a mother, men also have this feeling of, you know, responsibility and 
pushing through and making it done. And, not, and in the sense of like, okay, and from a certain stability and of a certain peace, like, okay, this is what I need to do. And I'm go, I go and do it. So that's all part of the earth element. Then you also have another aspect of when that is out of balance. So when we tend to over care for others, we tend to forget ourselves. So then it starts to get out of balance. And then it takes, it drains you basically because you give more than you receive. So in that moment, it is really important that you choose me time for yourself. Yeah, so it's really important to take care of yourself, to nurture yourself, and not only with food or uh, uh, sports or uh, physical activity that you do or with sleep, but also with like, how do you care for yourself? Are you kind for yourself? What are the thoughts that you are saying to yourself or what, what do you say to yourself? Um, are you putting yourself down? Are you being really critical with yourself or else or are also are you also really mild and compassionate with yourself? Being able to enjoy when you have been working a lot and then it's done, the task is done. Then do you go right away into the next thing or do you really enjoy the moment of, yes, it's done and let's celebrate this? Because that is also the earth energy, wanting to celebrate, wanting to be together, gatherings, you know, like wanting to be with friends, a party, get together with food, you know, and really being there in the moment. And not only about like, okay, I work, 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 and I continue, 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 which we have a lot of in our Western world. Like we do, 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 do. We work, 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 work. And then actually we don't give ourselves a breather or the possibility to Ah, oh, okay, it's done. And then allow yourself to be at rest, so to say. So there is a, a little bit of imbalance there. So what we create, we drain ourselves, but also it's very stressful for a system. And therefore, all kinds of digestive patterns or difficulties can occur. Or that you hold water in your body, for example. So you have like a bloating feeling or like um, uh, a very, um, oh, what's it called? The smushy feeling in the legs, for example, uh, fluid retention in the legs, for example. Or um, you get really lethargic and that you don't want to do anything. You cannot, you cannot start anything because you don't have the energy for it. And that's something that the draining sense of not taking care enough of ourselves, that's something that is very visible in our lifestyle. We don't really tend to stop. So that is an aspect of the earth element. And then also the worrying part. So it's connected, like I said, to the mother earth energy, you know, the caring, the holding, taking care of, loving, um, nourishing. But if we kind of tend to over care, then instead of mothering, it becomes kind of like smothering, you know, like this, that, that feeling like, oh, please, mom or dad, leave me alone because I can take my own responsibility. So that is also the earth element, elemental energy within you being out of balance not being able to let go of control there, not being able to leave the responsibility there where it belongs. So, because then you want to arrange it all. You want to take everything on top of your shoulders. Oh, you're going to make it right. And that also makes you having the feeling like that nobody's really taking care of you, but you are the one who is always kind of holding the space for everyone. Also, if you recognize yourself like, that you are a person that always wants harmony and doesn't like that there is a conflict or something, that is also belonging to the earth element. So there are numerous aspects of where you can feel like, oh, my earth element is out of balance. So in the outside world, you can notice that too. So for example, if um, you are in a project, yeah, and you want to get something done there, and then all these people are working together, 
there is also a person that has to say, okay, this needs to be done, that needs that needs to be done. And there are the actual workers. And those people that are actually doing the work, those are the earth people, so to say, who do that in that moment. So, uh, and also, um, I just had it in my mind, but now it flew out of my mind. Well, it, that's taking me to the next point, because the earth element has also to do with concentration. If you have, for example, nurtured yourself, nourished yourself enough, and I don't mean only with food, but also nourishments in the sense of inspiration that really gives you a feeling of fulfillment, of contentment, of being okay with where you are, you know? So that concentration and a clear mind and to be able to make the choices, for example, in the morning you get up and you take a moment like, okay, what kind of day do I have ahead? Are you a kind of person that kind of has a to-do list and strictly, strictly follows that? Or from connection, you say, okay, I can do this, 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 and this, and then kind of sit with it so to, you really feel in connection with yourself in that moment. And from there, from connection, you do the things that you need to do. So not from the mind, which is more like a wood kind of energy to like, okay, I have this list and I get it done and not really savoring when you have it uh, done, then um, being able to enjoy it. So that is also part of the earth element to really be able to enjoy the fruits of your work, so to say. And then also I wanted to mention, I did say that. Yeah. All right. So what is a challenge for somebody that the earth element is out of balance is to really be able to set boundaries, to say yes to that and no to that. Because otherwise you tend to overgive and overdo all the time. Self-care is also very important so that you keep yourself nurtured and full of energy, you know? So, uh, for example, taking uh, an ho a holiday so that you can recharge and restore, which is ultimately intimately connected to the water energy to restore your, your, your energies. But it also is that giving that time to yourself, that act on its own is actually the earth element. Yeah. So it is about coming home to yourself, leaving the, the responsibilities there where it belongs, making the right choices for yourself so that you don't get drained that you feel like, oh, you really want to be in connection in the moment to be present here and now, but also savior that to be there present in the moment. And also the worrying. So there is this saying about like a, a stone in the stomach, like that you're kind of like overthinking things all the time. That is also an imbalance of the earth uh, energy or basically a manifestation that how the body, or in this case, the mind shows you that there is something not quite right. So this worrying and not being able to see clearly, not being not able to distinguish what needs to be done, that kind of worrying, worrying, that also it has to do with digestion, literally. Kind of like when you eat too much and your body cannot digest it well, it has like an effect on your brain, like you get wooly brain, wo a little bit cloudy eyes. Uh, you can have like white lips, a uh, white tongue. These are all manifestations of signs of the body letting you know that the earth energy is out of balance. So with all this information, and it's always really difficult, like, okay, you have all this information and then what? But it starts first of all with, okay, feeling this centeredness, this connectiveness, this uh, uh, wanting to share and receive with others. That is the really the essence of the earth energy, this nourishment of loving care, and not only for others, but for yourself. So it, to be able to do that, you need to be in connection with yourself. And then from there, you can do those things that you need to do or that you feel like doing 
or that you feel like sharing. So that are the most important things that I can tell you about the earth energy and how that manifests. Of course, there is a lot more things to say. For example, um, sweet cravings, craving in, in general, craving for something, certain cravings that are not good for you or food that is not, not good for you. That is also something like, oh, you lack something. You're not content. You're not nourished enough, not inspired enough, maybe. So then this craving comes up that you need to fulfill. So, yeah, if you have any questions about this before I go into the poses and how you can balance or uh, react to those kinds of things that you notice that your earth energy is out of balance, how you can, um, yeah, counterweigh that uh, actually with a yoga practice, for example. So before I go into that, is there... Any question about this? <laughs> okay, so no question. Thank you. <laughs> Yoga, my energy. Well, you know, when questions come up, just let me know. Write it down and then I'll come back to it. So connected to uh, your practice. So you notice these things, right? You have a woolly brain or you have difficulty concentrating or maybe you notice yourself that you're worried a lot, that you cannot make a decision on a certain uh, choice, or um, you feel kind of left out. You don't. You feel like you always like have to do more than other than others, and that you never receive something some time. Then already by itself, giving yourself a yoga practice or meditation practice that already gives you that me time to be able to connect and ground inside of yourself. So that is actually already an act of self-care and self time, me time. Yeah. So already the step to your mat, you could say is an act of earth energy to take care of yourself. So that is already one step. Then depending on what it is that you need. So if your mind goes all over the place, Sometimes it helps to kind of um, go in and, for example, a meditative practice or a yin yoga practice can help with that. And then maybe first do the yin yoga practice because the yin yoga poses really help you to kind of calm down, to get centered, to really connect with what it is that you're feeling. And then maybe you're okay enough to be able to sit and meditate. So how do you stimulate your body then? Uh, these meridians. So the meridians that are connected to the earth energy has to do with spleen, stomach, and pancreas also. But the spleen and stomach are actual, uh, and the pancreas as well, but they are actual organs on the left side, just below your ribs in your body. So the stomach and the spleen are on the left side. Of course, physically, they have to do with digestion. Yeah. So, but we know that the moment our gut is not working properly, then it has direct effect on our minds or on our brain and also the functioning of our brain. So the spleen and stomach, and in Chinese medicine, the, the organs itself have like this physical function, but also again, this energetic function. So they discovered that these organs have this kind of energy feel to it that I just explained, like all these aspects of grounding, of nurturing, of nourishing, of giving to yourself really of the intake of food that you take and the drinks that you take. So that is taking care of the body. So that that's where they are like, oh, that's where earth in the body is connected. So then we also have meridians. Basically, you can see them as channels like nadis in um, Indian yogis call them nadis and energy channels, but they are throughout the whole body because they discovered that the meridians or the nadis, they are within the fascia of the body. So that's why it's so great in yin yoga because you stay for a longer period of time in a pose. The stimulation goes deep into the body, into the fascia, all the way down into the cells. And in the fascia, and the fascia is numerous, holding everything together in your body, and connecting everything in your body. So basically it's this vast network 
liquid network. And within that, you have like endless connections of energy where the chi flows through, the energy flows through. So see it as kind of rivers of water. Um, we like in topo we see uh, rivers but when for example water comes down from a mountain it ripples out in, in many different pathways so what is the river right so but it's all the same it's all the water energy so you could imagine that within your body as well but in Chinese medicine they indicated like the primary meridians and on which they located acupuncture points that are that we can stimulate, for example, with needles or with pressure or with, well, there are many ways, but also with yin poses to be able to target those areas of the meridians. And not the specific line, but there are also broader areas. So the area of the stomach and spleen in the body is all on the front. So the stomach goes down, the face is here in the front of the throat, then the spleen comes up from the toes, but first let's do the stomach. So the stomach starts in the face and then goes to front of the body. So really connecting with the belly. What's interesting also, it goes over the primary meridian, it goes over the nipple. So that is the line with the acupressure points. And then of course, as a woman breastfeeding, it's nourishing the baby. So I thought that was a interesting thing to know. So that is stomach meridian. But we, as we practice yin yoga poses, we, we stimulate the whole area. So it's not specifically like, oh yeah, I feel this, this specific line. That's not what it's about. You want to target the whole front of the body, the belly, then going into the hip flexor area here, the front of the thighs. So if you feel a stimulation with the yin poses in the thighs, down the shins, and then actually going into the big toe and on the top of the toe, that's where the meridians of stomach and spleen are. So actually already sitting on top of your heels, and this is called in yin yoga, Asa, this is actually a great pose to enhance Sitting on your heels already is a, a really good way to aid your adjust, digestion or sitting like this in meditation, for example, can also be done. Some people then, of course, have problems with their knees and they can't sit like this. Then no worries. You can still stimulate your stomach and spleen meridian. You might not feel a strong stimulation in your thighs the moment you put a pillow underneath, but it's more important to take care of your knees than then to feel the, the thigh area in this pose. There are other ways to stimulate the, this area as well without flexing the knees a lot. So another example could be, for example, dragon pose. So then you step forward with one leg and you let the hip sink. And then probably you will feel mostly in the front hip area. If you feel the back knee, you can always support the back knee. And if you don't feel this area, then you can play around a little bit with your hip or the position of your leg in order to feel really the front part of the body because that is where the meridian pathways of the spleen and stomach are. You can also come up. There are endless variations possible for this pose. You can also sit on top of the block. Some of you might have seen Eckhart Yoga classes of mine and then I specifically mention okay so no compression you want to be feeling here that is painful so then you can also straighten the front leg out or allow it to fall over to the side so that you can really focus on opening this area. But fascia also or merid the meridians or chi are stimulated by both stretch, compression or twist, and even in contraction when we do it a bit more yang, then also, of course, the chi is stimulated, but not so deeply into the fascia itself because you need to relax the muscles for that. So that pose can be done, for example, a pose that you might all know to be able to target the, the torso more is, for example, Anahatasana. And here it's also important not to feel any painful sensation on the top of the shoulder. So then you can play with the arm position in order to not to feel that. Or you can just lie down back onto your back. For example, 
reclined butterfly position. And you really make sure that you create opening in the chest here. So then you feel it here because you have your legs like this. Then maybe you don't feel the quads, but then we could also do a saddle pose and then stimulate. So any pose that stimulates the front part of the body and saddle being a pose that's really great because it really can get into the top of the foot. So poses that stimulate top of the foot, the shin area, the thigh area, the hip area, the belly area, the chest area, the front throat area, all that is all stomach and spleen. So you can also go back in any variation. And it doesn't matter if you go all the way down, as long as you feel the front part of your body being stimulated with doable compression in the lower back, no painful or sharp sensation anywhere, and you can really relax into targeting those areas, then you're stimulating your stomach and spleen meridian. And then with the idea of like balancing out the, the uh, elemental energy of earth. So what the effect is, is different for everyone. Yeah. So it can either calm the mind. It can um, regulate your digestive system. It can actually just the act of taking care of yourself can already ah, give this feeling of contentment, of release, of being okay with yourself or that you become aware of your thoughts, of what you're actually saying to yourself. Are you bringing yourself down all the time? Or are you actually also talking sweet to yourself as what you would do to a child? So, yeah, it's, it's very different how the elemental energy of Earth can manifest or show itself to you. So... If you have any questions about the elemental earth energy within you or maybe in your surrounding or in relationships or in when you're practicing your uh, pose. Then let me know. So, mm, Emma, do you, hello, Emma, do you believe certain actions have an impact on the meridian and on the earth element. Yes, for sure, depending on uh, what it is that you do, of course. Like I said, it is energy, right? And when there is action, there is always a reaction. So if the action that you do is harmful for you, then you will feel that as an effect on you as well. So... Yes. Do you have a specific question about that? <laughs> also, for example, in relationships, you know, if you are a person that tends to care more for the for the your partner than the partner cares for you, also the other one who is taken care of all the time can get a little bit lazy, you know. Um can get a little bit lazy and kind of like, oh, yeah, I take care of. So they start to do less, yeah? And then that means that you have to do more again up until you set your boundaries like, hey, now I've done enough, or ask uh, to the other person, hey, would you like to do this or share the load kind of thing? That already brings actually the elemental energy within your relationship into balance more instead of one working harder than the other or doing more than the other and making it kind of more balanced. So you have to see it like this. Um, oh, yes, cesarean section, this is a cut in the fascia of the belly. So it has an effect on your body. It doesn't mean that it cuts through the meridian pathways, and that therefore the meridian pathways are not functioning. The body can heal again and can restore itself. And like nature, when you stop the water flow from one part, it will find another way to flow differently. But the energetic quality of the earth energy is still there. Likewise with the meridian. But it might be a bit distorted. So, And that can come up, for example, 
in various uh, ways. Is that what you meant, Emma? Okay. So, B, please, um, can you tell more about the fear of conflict in the earth element, avoiding conflict? Well, like I said, that is, you know, if you want always harmony and you don't like to uh, dis discuss things or um, put them on the table, so to say, uh, for the sake of not, you know, not creating any difficulty. But sometimes things need to be spoken, need to be said, need to be discussed so that everybody actually still feels okay without uh, that you need to get into a certain fight. It all depends on how you bring it. So if your earth quality is in, or your earth elemental energy is in balance, you're still able to say the things that you need to say to be able to preserve yourself also, or maybe for the whole community, because an earth person who has more of that energy inside, meaning not that the earth elemental, that there's more chi of earth or something, but I really mean like this person is like more, has more earth quality in their character, so to say. So um, that they... Uh, are able to, you know, say the things in a kind way, in a respectful way, but still not uh, losing themselves in the process, you know? So that is, is that what you meant, um, Bay? How long would you recommend to stay in those poses? Okay, so yin practice on itself you, you can stay uh, various minutes in a post. You can stay three, five, or ten minutes. Um, me personally, I always tell the students, if you are in the right depth for you in that pose, then it doesn't matter how long you stay in the pose. But if you go in too deep, too fast in a pose, then it, five minutes can be very tough to stay into. So this is actually, again, the earth elemental quality to determine, hey, what is enough and what not, you know, to be able to say, hey, how much do I ask from myself or how much do I give to myself? How mild, how gentle can I be with myself? How compassionate can I be with myself? So if you're a kind of person who always like, likes to go to the end and ask a lot from it, him or herself, then maybe it might be interesting to not go so deep in the pose and then see what happens, you know? Going into the furthest, farthest edge that you can go doesn't always necessarily mean that then you get all the benefits because most of the time when you're in too deep, you're not able to relax, you're not able to let go, and then it becomes a whole struggle. But it's a good thing to learn when you, tend, you have that tendency to do that, then you learn, oh, right, and then you become aware of that you do that that way all the time. So then you actually can learn to do a little bit less and to be a bit more kinder to yourself. So there is no amount of minutes that you can, uh, certain amount. Sometimes people say, oh, three minutes for the beginner. But like I said, I believe that a beginner can also stay five minutes in a pose if they are in the pose in the right way for them and also in the right depth. So that is uh, more the functional approach to practicing yoga. And that is also what comes up in the 30-hour module Yin and Meridians, where you really learn like, okay, how can I adapt the pose for me so that I can get the benefits and that I can still relax and able to let go and not feel any uh, painful sensations that are harmful for me. So practicing it in a way that the, the pose works for you instead of you kind of trying to fit into the pose in a more aesthetic way. Mm. Okay. So I hope that helped, Marie. Or do you want uh, anything more specific? 
Lisa, what do you think are possible reasons for struggling with celebrating and gathering with others? Wow. Uh, well, that depends. Um, some people are shy. Uh, some people are um, are just not in the mood. They are in a place in their lives that it's difficult for them to gather with others. Sometimes, you know, the intensity and the energy of others is too intense. So earth elemental energy is about real connection. So it is also about choosing the people that you feel free with, that you feel okay with, um, being with family or friends or partner that you can really feel at home with. So this feeling at home with somebody or somewhere or in a house or at a job, you know, that is really, then the earth, elemental earth energy is kind of um, nourished, nurtured. Yeah. If you put yourself in a position where you're fearful or actually you feel mm -mm, this is not right, listen to that and then make the choices for you. It doesn't mean that uh, everybody likes the same thing, you know, that you need to go to a party and have fun. Nah, nah, nah. If that is not suiting your character, but other things are that you can really enjoy with eating, having a good meal with a good friend, and that's already for you a party. You know, that is also um, true connection. And others, they find true connection the more the merrier, you know? So, and they really feel in their element there. So also there, the er elemental earth energy has, of course, different manifestations depending on the characters of people. Does that help, Lisa, to kind of understand that? Okay, Bay, all right, Marie, great, <laughs> Lisa, super, all right, um, can, Julia, can someone actually have too much earth energy, like uh, liver shooting over, and what do you mean with liver shooting over, um, of course, you know, like the earth energy being in extreme is that of giving too much, being too responsible, allowing everything to feel on your shoulders, um, to be on your shoulders. Um, not the mothering kind of type, but the smothering kind of type. Yeah. The, uh, the one that is not taking care of yourself, you know, the one that always worries, the, the one that can never make a decision or choose for him or herself. So that is actually too much energy, too much of the good thing, so to say. Too little of the good thing is the opposite, not being able to take care of yourself, not being able to take me time, not being able to say no, to set boundaries, uh, not being able to speak up when it is needed because for the sake of not disrupting the harmony, which then is a false harmony because it Actually, it does not exist then because underneath it all, there is a lot of things happening. So you just have to, again, look at the expressions of that. So where it's too much in excess, they call it in Chinese medicine, too much of the good thing. That's where you can recognize oh, the earth energy is in excess. It's too much. Yeah. When it's too little, like you're not able to nurture for yourself or give yourself what it is that you need and all these other things that I mentioned, that is lacking. So then there is a deficiency. That's how they call it in Chinese medicine. Is that what you meant, um, Julia? Uh, so I recognize myself and most of the behaviors I <laughs> described in my case, they are year long patterns caused by the fact that I repeatedly cross my boundaries. Yeah. I feel that the physical practice can help to alleviate, but ultimately the patterns are still there. Do you have suggestions to help me approach these patterns more in depth? Well, you know, then we get into the psychology of it all, you know, because if we have certain patterns that are not helpful for us, and then, of course, you know, 
uh, getting physical, moving your body, eating the right things, drinking the right things, all these things. And, you know, we can still sometimes eat something sweet. That's also kind of being sweet to yourself. But in that other aspect, you the, the challenge is in choosing for yourself. So maybe start with making small steps. You know, the moment you, it seems like you are now aware of that you have long-term patterns um, that you tend to like um, uh, care more for others than for yourself, not setting any boundaries. So then start small, you know, maybe just with yourself, like, oh, maybe something simple. I'm, I'm just saying something food-wise maybe or practice-wise. Oh, this morning I'm really going to give myself a really great – uh, practice. Like uh, this afternoon, I did, did actually a Nidra practice of James Higgins uh, because my menstruation has started and I felt really low and actually I wanted to take care of myself. So I did that, you know, so, oh, and then afterwards I felt more refreshed and again in connection where I had the tendency also to kind of Oh yeah, do this and do that because today is my day of work. The kids are not here. So now I have the time but then not to go into that pattern, I need to stop myself and then choose something to do for yourself. Or maybe in the beginning of the day of all the to-do things, you put something on top of priority, what is for you. Yeah, that can be also something. And really stick to that. Or um, enjoy the meal that you're taking. Or um, enjoy the moment that when you're with a friend. Yeah. Or when a certain moment comes up where you have to decide yes or no, and this can be already a step too far, but then to say, mm, no, step out of that comfort zone because you will feel it like, ah, oh, there I go again. And then, okay, now I try to say no for some time. So start with little things. Maybe first with you for yourself when you're only with yourself and then in connection with others to see if you can make those small steps also. I hope that might help. <laughs> Maria, are the poses similar for lack and too much of earth energy? Yes. So all the poses that stimulate the earth and the, or the earth meridian, so the spleen and the stomach, all the back bends. So um, what it is that we do to the body in a practice as long as you don't feel sharp, stinging sensation, you don't hurt yourself, you don't ask too much of yourself, you find that balance, then actually you uh, trigger the self-healing aspect of the body, which is always there. So if it's too much, it will diminish. If it's deficient, it will increase. If it's in balance, it will stay in balance and it will just be nurtured. It, it doesn't work that way that when you do a practice, then it takes from it. And especially yin, because of course, yang, you have to see it in a broader picture also. So let's say you have a burnout, yeah, uh, or you are in the middle of a burnout. And then you keep on doing things that actually um, make that burnout worse. Yeah, so active dynamic practice, maybe uh, too much working, overeating, not sleeping, all the things that actually deplete you even more. But now, if you want, then want to help yourself, you need to reverse it with other things. So the, the principle of yin and yang, is there too much yang? You feed it with yin, yeah? So you can do that also with your yoga, depending on what style of yoga you, you pick. Do you pick yang yoga or do you pick yin yoga? Do you feel lethargic? Yeah, which is then... Uh, kind of like heavy earth uh, quality, then maybe movement and a more young practice will help you out to get that out of your system. Or you're so tired and you have been doing, 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 you actually benefit more from a yin practice or a restorative practice or a meditative practice or yoga nidra, you know? So it all depends on where you're at and use the tools that are present at Eckhart Yoga also to be able to tap into all these different yoga styles to be able to nurture you. So that is how you can go about it. There is a yin and a yang to everything in life. So when you notice you lack something, that's 
probably deficiency of yin. So then you need to feed yourself with more energy. Yeah. If you don't have a lot of energy and you do stuff that you need a lot of energy, then again, you diminish your energy. But if you're kind of lethargic and you need to start get into movement, that first step of to get into movement is the hardest one. But then when you move, you feel energized afterwards. So, and that's also a little bit of trial and error, error that each and every one of us has to do to kind of find your way of like what is needed. Yeah. So to go about your yoga practice in this case or anything really, painting, walking, cooking, you know, that can also be part of nourishing yourself. So you have to tune in, connect, which is the earth quality, connect and feel, hey, what is it that I need? What do I want to give to myself? That is totally earth elemental energy. So I hope that helps, Marie. <laughs> Uh, Julia, yes, that's what I meant. Now I understand better. Mostly it comes together that someone is over mothering and therefore not taking care of themselves. But I get your point. Thanks. Okay, great, Julia. Lisa, any tips for worrying less when having a physical condition and daily symptoms to help one's earth organs rest and relax? Mind, body are so interconnected. Yes, they are, Lisa. Um, Worrying is basically overthinking things, no? So the mind just kind of catches on a thought and makes it bigger and bigger and bigger. I don't know how to stop that, really. The only thing that I can think about is, um, and of course, you know, when you have physical conditions, that is worrisome, no? Or symptoms. What's going to happen? Where is it going to go? Is it going to get worse? Is it going to get better? We don't know. So I believe the only thing that we can do in such situations is to connect in the moment and to be as sweet as you can with yourself. So taking care, you know, and if that is lying down, sleeping, uh, taking a walk, um, meditating, um, that helps. And, you know, we cannot always fix the things. Sometimes we also have to trust that things kind of um, work its way out for better or for worse. Sometimes we are not the ones to decide this, what's going to happen. So I recognize what you say, you know, worrying about things, but then in the end, what does it give you? You know, it makes you only feeling worse. So then you have to decide, okay, what what am I good gonna put my attention and my and therefore my energy there, or am I gonna put it somewhere else? And not in the sense like ignoring it, you feel the worry there, but you're saying, okay, I'm gonna do something opposite to that energy so that I can maybe turn it around. I hope that helps, Lisa. <laughs> at least turned around the thought, huh? And being more uh, accepting of what is, however bad the situation is, and that is a very difficult thing to do. Uh, yeah. Um, is there music that would support this flow? How about breath while holding the poses? Yes. The breath is very important because that's also nourishment, right? We need the, the chi, the air chi, the, the oxygen for our system to be alive and to be healthy also. So the lungs and are intimately connected also with nourishment. So yeah, you can do breathing exercises and especially the breath when it is relaxed, then it brings the, the belly and therefore also the organs in movement. The body likes movement. It doesn't like stagnation in the sense of like staying rigid all the time. Yeah. Yin poses are, of course, still, but it doesn't mean that it have to stay rigid. You can also move a bit and then um, um, 
come still in the pose. So the breath actually helps your digestion better. Whether it's a natural breath or you actually guide the breath more into the belly or you retain the breath in the expansion so that there's room created for the organs or you focus more on the exhale so that there's more connection felt with your organs and then you inhale again. So there are many ways of doing any kind of pranayama and I invite you to experiment with that. Yeah, and earth music, I don't know, you know, whatever music that makes you happy, that you makes you feel relaxed, that you makes you feel connected, that makes you feel content at home. So I would say go by that. Loneliness related to the earth element. Mm. No, you can feel alone in the sense of that you have the feeling that you have to do everything alone and that you don't have support. But loneliness is more related to the water energy. You know, the that energy is more related to the silence, you know, kind of observative person that only says things when he or she is right. And this person is more like a shy person. And that person can therefore feel a bit more different than the rest of the world or feel more alone. So that is more water. <laughs> Great, Maria. Thanks for your reflection. You're welcome, Lisa. And BB, how can creativity, what mostly have been related to earth energy, still feels like it's a way to earth myself? Gardening, painting, drawing is about sitting still or just focusing on one thing. No. Um, actually getting your hands and feet in the earth or in the dirt, so to say, or in the work, you know, whether it's paint, whether it's food, whether it's the garden, whether it's clay, it doesn't really matter. Creativity there is where you kind of build something, you know, that is what the earth energy is about. It's about building something, putting a seed somewhere and then it nourishes and you nourish it and then you can uh, pluck the, the fruits of it. So it is about this creation force. And that is what the earth energy is about. So yeah, you know, go ahead and do those things. Hmm. Do you have any thoughts on what I can do if mother-daughter relationship is reversed? My mother always asked a lot of me, too much of me. Thank you. Yes, Pia. Then the relation, the, the mother feeling is reversed. So I would say it's up to you to set boundaries and to say, mom, I'm not doing this. This is your job. Or maybe this is something that you can do. So it asks from you to stick up for yourself and to say, until here and no further. And that's very difficult to do with your mom, if you, especially if you're in a pattern, that, that, that this is the pattern. But you have to tell her and say, mom, I, I don't want to do it, or I cannot do it, or could you do it? Asking sometimes is also a, a way of setting boundaries or saying, no, I don't want to do it because I'm tired or it's too much. Be honest. <laughs> oh, yes, good food increase. So sweet food and not uh, created with sweets and cakes and all these things that are that we, we also love but uh, natural sweet uh, food so uh, cooked rice is sweet for example but also the yellow and orange colors so like um, a carrot uh, the orange potato or the layered um, foods like uh, artichoke or um, onion, anything that has a sweet taste to it when it's cooked or, um, and because the earth energy really likes warm foods. Yeah. So created with love. <laughs> so that is all uh, not cold because that cools down the digestive system. 
<laughs> Great. Yeah. So yeah, all this and more, if you want to know about all this and also how to integrate it into your yoga practice, we have uh, a course on the Eckerd Academy, which is the Yin and Meridians, uh, and that dives also in the upper body poses and also the lower body poses, how to target the meridians. And uh, if you want to go more into the functional practicing, so really discovering how a pose works for your body, that is uh, in in both courses, the yin and meridians one, but also in the yin and anatomy one. And then there's another course adjusting yin and yang poses uh, for your own benefits. So that might also something to check out if you are interested. But the meridian and all these elemental things are coming up in the yin and meridian um, training. And for 48 hours, you have like 20% off. I always forget to say this, but you also get a, an email. And also, uh, if you uh, signed up but couldn't on this time, then you can always see the recording. So thank you very much, dear people, and also for all your questions, because that makes it uh, more complete. And then I can relate to you more, even though... Uh, Otherwise, I can just say stuff and then. So the interaction is great. Thank you for that. <laughs> Super, Emma. You're welcome. Oh, the cost of the trainings, you will see it on the in the email that you will receive. <laughs> yes, I feel it. The gratitude. Thank you. Thank you, too, everyone, for being here. And... Um, Hopefully you can recognize the earth energy within you and around you. Make that something part of your day to recognize and take care. Mm -hmm. Super. Thank you, everyone. Have a lovely day or evening, depending where you are. And hope to see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Grateful too. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs> I go now. <laughs>